Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionalis with a new video in our series about fluids and electrolytes, acid-based disturbance. In previous videos, we have talked about osmosis and osmolality. All of what we have talked about is the measured osmolality. But today, I think it's time to talk about the calculated osmolality. And now, let's get started. This is my sixth video in the series. These lectures are intended to be watched in order, so make sure to watch them before watching this video. Let me answer the previous question. On his first day in the hospital, a medical student administers 100% water to a patient instead of normal saline. What are the consequences? Okay, the plasma. So here are the red blood cells. Let's do them red. And here is the nice plasma. The plasma osmolality is supposed to be 290. If you were to administer normal saline, you keep the osmolality of plasma at 290. But now this stupid student administered 100% water. So now here is water. The osmolality of the plasma is going to decrease below 290. What's the normal osmolality inside the red blood cell? It has to be 290 to be in equilibrium with the plasma that is 290 at least before this stupidity occurs. Now, outside is hypoosmolar or hypotonic than the inside. What's going to happen is fluid is going to go to the red blood cell. Water is going to flow by osmosis into the red blood cell because now the red blood cell has higher solute concentration. And it will swell and swell and swell until, boom, it bursts. So the correct answer is B. Quick review on previous videos, osmosis, simple diffusion of water, osmotic pressure, the pressure needed to stop osmosis, osmol, osmosis caused by a mole, osmolality, the amount of force per volume measured in milliosmol per kilogram, how about milliosmol per liter, we call this thing osmolarity, and I had a mnemonic in the previous video, oh, and here is the mnemonic, osmolality per kilogram, osmolarity per liter, which one is more accurate, osmolality, which one is more practical, osmolarity? As you know, all of osmolality that we have talked about until now is the measured osmolality. You draw some blood and send it to the lab. In the lab, they have a machine called osmometer. It's going to measure how many osmoles are in the plasma, and it will give you a number. Normally, it's 290 milliosmoles per liter. Calculated osmolality, on the other hand, requires you not to use a machine, but to use your brain, and to calculate it using this equation. Calculated osmolality equals, okay, calculated osmolality is dependent on what we call the big three, sodium, glucose, and blood urea nitrogen. The biggest of the biggest is the sodium. Why two times sodium? Because sodium is always combining to something else, let's say chloride. So, one for the sodium and one for the chloride, that's why we multiply it by two. So, two times sodium plus glucose over 18. To make it easier, let's do it glucose over 20. 18 is very close to 20, at least where I grew up. BUN, which is blood urea nitrogen, over 2.8, which is kind of close to 3, just to make it easier. Very nice. So, normally, measured osmolality in the lab should equal calculated osmolality using the equation. They should equal 290 milliosmoles per liter. And as you know, osmolality in the ICF should equal osmolality of the plasma, should equal the osmolality in the interstitium, because otherwise, water is going to flow to a certain compartment until you burst. No, 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 no. They have to be equal, and we call this homeostasis. Okay, now mnemonic time. Here is your arrogant doctor, and he says, These lab technicians are mediocre. They just measure the osmolality using the osmometer. And to complete the mnemonic, you can use, say using the machine. The machine also starts with an M. But I am a competent doctor. I calculate the osmolality using my cerebral hemispheres. Oh, this guy is educated. Depending on the sodium, because C and S has the same sound, which is the main cation, okay? So calculated osmolality depends on the sodium, 2 times sodium plus glucose over 20 
plus bun over 3. Now pause the video and write this equation without looking like 10 times straight. Do this until you never forget it again. So here is another mnemonic. The big three. Sodium is the main ECF cation. Glucose is the main source of energy. BUN is the main source of bleep. I'm not going to say it because I'm a good person. So let's summarize. Measured osmolality using the lab osmometer. Calculated osmolality using this equation. So let's calculate it. You know, what's the normal plasma sodium concentration? You remember the rule of fours? It's 140. How about glucose? It's about 100. How about BUN? Normally it's less than 20, so let's say 15. Let's do it. 2 times 140 is 280. 100 over 20 is 5. 15 over 3 is 5. 280 plus 5 plus 5 equals, ta-da, 290 milliosmoles per liter. Under norm normal circumstances, measured osmolality should equal calculated osmolality. It could be that measured osmolality is higher than calculated osmolality by, um, let's say, 1, 2, 3 points, 4 points. But if it's like 20 points, like more than 10, Houston, we have a serious problem. If these videos help you, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. You will get my notes. You can view, download, print, and enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis. Be safe, stay happy, and study hard. In the next video, we're going to talk about the osmolal gap.